Alright guys, so this is the second half of the video. As you can tell, I'm in the same surroundings with the same outfit, but I did want to um, do these two videos and put them out there. I just didn't want to put it into one because it would just be too long. Plus some people probably only want to see one of the videos. So yeah, basically this video is going to be my first and second trimester and like how all that went through currently I am in my third trimester I just started my third trimester so I'm just gonna throw in the first and second trimester into this video and I like it because I kind of can give you a whole conclusive idea of like everything that went on because now I'm past those trimesters so yeah let's just jump into it so after I found out I was pregnant I found out at in well I was four weeks pregnant <laughs> By the way guys, I'm going to be breathing hard a lot. I know I'm not moving, but like pregnancy really makes you short of breath. So the first trimester, I found out I was pregnant at four weeks and then the first trimester, it was fine the first, um, like up until the seventh week. So the first three weeks I was perfectly fine. Like besides me knowing that I was pregnant, like nothing felt any different. So um, yeah, everything was pretty much the same for the first three weeks until well no i lied so in the beginning i did have tender breasts which is one of the things that like made me think i was pregnant so i had tender breasts my emotions were all out of whack and what else i think that was pretty much it, it was just like the tender breasts and like the crazy uh hormones and stuff like that and then everything else was perfectly fine um so that was it for the first three weeks and then at seven weeks I started to have food aversions not even food aversions I had morning sickness but it wasn't just morning sickness it was all day uh, all day morning sickness and it was actually um, I was diagnosed with HG which is hypermesis gravidarium or some crap which basically is like you're sick all day long all night long like throughout your first trimester for some women it goes on longer than that so I was pretty much sick from week 7 to week 13 and literally it like people like women tell you it literally does stop at the 13th week like it's not 13 and a half weeks 14 weeks like for me it stopped like 13 weeks 13 weeks in a day or whatever but from seven weeks to 13 weeks six whole weeks I was sick I was like it was to the point that like I cried like it was so bad because I'm the type of person I don't get sick very easily I don't get queasy I don't throw up but like having to deal with that while I was pregnant it was basically like ha having a hangover all day long and you couldn't do anything to alleviate it and on top of it I had food aversions so basically I couldn't stand the smell of meat I couldn't like taste it I couldn't take anything the only thing I ate the first few trimesters was um, I mean the first few weeks was uh, crackers I drank ginger ale and then I had like ginger tea ginger candy like Basically anything with ginger I took just to help with the um, nausea to the point that at my 13th week I didn't want to see anything that had ginger in it like it would literally make me nauseous because that's all I ever had is just pure ginger of every kind and then crackers and then if I did eat it would be fruits and stuff like that like raw fruits and raw vegetables I could eat I couldn't really eat um, savory fruit savory food I couldn't eat like sweet stuff I hated sweet stuff even water Anyone who knows me knows that I'm obsessed with water. I love water. Speaking of, I'm thirsty. Hold on. Yeah, so anyone who knows me knows that I love water. I'm obsessed with water. I could just drink water. I don't need juice or any of that stuff. But I couldn't stomach water. Like, water had a taste to me, and it just made me nauseous. Hot water, cold water, room temperature water, I didn't want anything to do with any of it. Which I was just like... Why, why would that be a food aversion like water isn't even a food like it has no smell it has no taste it shouldn't have any taste but I was just like it was the weirdest thing ever so um, I just ate lots of uh, raw fruits and fruits and veggies and of course like um, I would eat like salt and vinegar chips like that went down perfectly fine like I liked salty things and sour things so I eat like sour candies but I tried not to because it made no sense to eat candy during the pregnancy because I was trying to have a healthy pregnancy. And like, I remember for a week, like I was in hell because um, uh, Bay actually is a chef. And for like, during my, I think ninth and 10th week or eighth and ninth week, 
he had um, some events that he was catering for and he's it was like a Jamaican event so he cooked Jamaican food for the events and of course he cooked at home because the kitchen is big enough for what he needed so he was cooking lots of Jamaican food normally I'm obsessed so I'd be happy about that but because I had food aversions and like anything savory just made me gag like I'd come home because like he he came home before me so I'd come home the house would smell of like Jamaican food cooking and like I'd literally like beeline for the bedroom close the door and like put stuff underneath the door and open the window so that like I could get the smell out like I was literally in bed and I'd cry and I felt so bad because like it's not his fault but I was just like really like at this time like this is going on you know like I can't deal with the smells I can't eat anything and like I'm just nauseous all the time and with all this food smell and stuff like that it was just bad and I think sometimes like he was kind of offended or hurt because he'd try to offer me food and I'd tell him like I can't eat it like I'm sorry I really can't eat it I'd take a bite and then I'd put it in the fridge so he wouldn't notice but of course he'd always see it and I'm like I, I can't eat it like I can only eat bland things anything bland I was game for I even ate oatmeal like I had oatmeal for breakfast every single day because that's the only thing I could stomach and I didn't even add anything to it. It was just like plain oatmeal and I tried to like just get it down as fast as I could just to feed the baby. And of course, um, what else? Yeah, that, that was like, I just had crazy food aversions the first trimester and I had crazy um, morning all day sickness which was like crazy because I thought, my mom she had seven of us. And she said she never dealt with morning sickness. So, like, she wasn't any help to me because she was just like, why are you acting this way? And I'm like, I'm not acting. My body's just responding to this new foreign being. Like, I can't help it. And, like, she actually used to make me pissed because, like, it, it made me feel like something was wrong with me. Because I honestly did think that, like, I'd be one of those people who had, like, that smooth pregnancy. Like, oh, no, morning sickness, no, nothing. I could eat whatever I wanted. You know, the only thing that I would have would be cravings. And... First trimester, I really didn't have any cravings. Um, I drank gin, uh, what is it, cranberry juice a lot, just because I love the taste of cranberry juice. It's tart and stuff like that. Plus, it's good for your body. So I was just like, yeah, okay, like it's, it has some nutrients in it. So I might as well drink that. And of course, I had my prenatal vitamins and stuff like that. But first trimester was horrible, horrible. Just like. Yeah, not really anything good and I was like so depressed my first trimester which like kind of scared my mom because I hadn't built an attachment to my pregnancy like I wasn't excited about my pregnancy and it was 90% to do with everything that I was going through just because I was just like first of all I can't feel anything so there's no attachment there but then on top of it it's just like I'm just sick all the time like it's like you have the flu all day every day for six weeks like that is not Fun. so like we used to argue all the time because she would not understand why I didn't want to talk about my pregnancy or the baby or anything and I'm like like it's new to me and I'm not dealing with like I'm not going through things really well and on top of it I was still working full-time so trying to act normal in the office while dealing with all this stuff was hard for me so I was always cranky I just like after work I'd go home and I'd sleep and that would be it plus it was like the dead of winter anyway so there was nothing to do nothing I wanted to do anyways so yeah, my first tri trimester, I was pretty much uh, a hermit, and I was miserable, and I cried a lot, because I was miserable. Um, what else? Yeah, that was pretty much it. So, I told you guys, this is not going to be that long of a video, because there wasn't really a lot of symptoms and stuff like that going on. I will say, though, in my second trimester is when, like... Things started to get more interesting in a sense so at like literally 13 weeks my um, hypermesis gravidarium stopped so I had no more morning sickness I was starting to feel more like myself you know like I, I was feeling better and of course like it was like spring now by then so it was just like I felt really like good like I felt like myself and then um, of course also I had booked the trip to go back home to Florida to visit my sisters because I was just like tired of the winter and the cold and I was just like I'm not staying here any longer especially because the winter actually went into the spring here in Canada and it was snowing in May yeah so I was just like screw this I'm leaving so I went down to Florida for a week and that really helped me out you know with a lot of vitamin D and spending time with my sisters and stuff like that so it was a nice little getaway from work and everything else 
and that was a good way to start my second trimester but I will tell you that was exactly when I started to show um, throughout the beginning of my pregnancy I really did not well I didn't take any pictures of my stomach because I didn't ever see a difference and I didn't want to be one of those women who's like oh six hours pregnant you know <laughs> like those memes that people show so I was just like I'm not gonna take pictures till you can actually see something so I actually took my first picture I think around like April 28th or so when like my gut actually turned into a bump and um yeah so I went down to Florida with some outfits summer outfits that I had from last year and 90% of them did not fit me anymore so like I was kind of taken aback because I didn't think I was growing until like my sister saw me and she's just like yeah you're showing and like I wasn't telling anyone that I was pregnant yet so it was like really hard for me like all I wore was leggings and a t-shirt all the time because that was the only thing that concealed my stomach especially like I brought a lot of empire waist dresses and those actually accentuate your pregnancy I thought like they were going to help me hide my bump but I think because my belly was really high like I, I was holding really high with the baby so um it just it was accentuated even more like you could tell that I was pregnant I guess more than someone who was like holding lower so yeah that was that was interesting because I really wasn't wanting to tell anyone I was pregnant until I was 20 weeks in because I'm, I'm a very superstitious person and I just wanted to make sure that this pregnancy actually did take and like everything was fine because we do have miscarriages in my family so like I just didn't want people to be able to tell that I was pregnant until I was ready to reveal it so yeah there was that and then um cravings yes I didn't really have any crazy cravings in the beginning like for breakfast every day like I I really want scrambled eggs and um pickles like I don't know why but like I I hadn't eaten pickles in years I bought a jar of pickles just because like I was craving that and I literally ate a huge jar of pickles in a week because I'd have my scrambled eggs and then I'd have a pickle on the side for breakfast every day for like two three weeks in a row and like it was so delicious to me like I loved it and like sometimes I put like jalapeno peppers on top banana peppers on top of it and like yeah I craved that for a really long time um other cravings I really didn't have any like specific cravings like um sometimes like I crave poutine and stuff like that which I just go get and then like I was happy um what else sometimes I crave chili had chili made me happy that was pretty much it like my biggest craving in my in the beginning of my second trimester was poutine and then of course like I, I just loved fresh fruits and veggies and stuff like that I wasn't really into um, salads and stuff that much and being a huge coffee drinker I in the first trimester I couldn't even drink any coffee nor did I want it want to because like I didn't want it to affect the baby or whatever so but I did start to incorporate coffee into the second trimester just because I started to get so tired like literally in your second trimester you get exhausted like my first trimester I wasn't really that exhausted I, was, I think I was more tired from the nausea but my second trimester like I was just exhausted all the time like sometimes I had really high bursts of energy like the first half of my second trimester I had high bursts of energy but the second half like I've been so tired and like literally I start my work day at 9 a.m. and by like noon I'm just ready to go home and like I have to like thank goodness like I work only six hours a day so I troop it for the next three hours and then like I go home to take a nap or like because I do have a second job two nights a week so it's like those nights like I just have to be like you know, I gotta bite the bullet and just go to my second job from 4 to 8 and then when I get home, I just crash. Like, that's the other thing. I never stayed up past 10 o'clock. I couldn't. And Hubby, like, I felt bad because sometimes he'd want to, like, cuddle and watch movies and literally, I'd get on the couch with him to watch a movie and in seconds, I'm out. And, like, he'd be up to, like, 2 in the morning because he's a night owl anyways. And I just feel bad because, like, we really didn't bond because we didn't see each other during the day because I'd leave for work. And he leaves for work in the afternoon, so he doesn't get home till like 10 anyways. So we really didn't see each other the first trimester. I mean, the, the second trimester at all much. Because like by the time he got home, I was just tired. Like we talked for a bit, and then I just go straight to bed. Uh, what else? Um, oh, uh, <laughs> a weird craving thing that I'm dealing with. 
well that I was dealing with at the end of the second trimester and it's now starting continuing into the third trimester is I've been craving ice like the hospital ice and shaved ice like specifically and basically like what I've been doing is I'll fill a cup with water and ice I I like drink down the water and then just like chew on the ice just because like I like it when it has those um porous little holes in it like it's like just the way it crunches is really soft so like I've really been craving hospital shaved ice and stuff like that and on top of it I've been craving starch which is the weirdest thing like I mean like the powder starch and I remember my mom dealt with that craving with two of my sisters like my the youngest two and like she'd literally like eat a spoonful of starch and I'm like I don't know if that's good for your health but like even now thinking about it it makes my mouth water and I don't know why like I just love the smell of starch and the smell of chalk which is really really weird I don't know maybe it has something to do with what's going on in my body but yeah I could actually go for some nice right now anyways okay so that was it for the food aversions uh, what else did I experience the second trimester swollen feet um, uh, something that people don't tell you about there is a whole lot of discharge a whole lot of discharge like Sometimes you will think that you're peeing on yourself and then you go to the bathroom and you're just like, no, that's not pee, that's just my body. And like, it's normal, like the doctors tell you that's fine. Like during the day, someday you will have to change your underwear. Like I know it's TMI for some people, but it is what it is. That's what happens with pregnancy. Another thing I experienced in the second half once uh, the baby started to get heavier was that I lose some control of my urinary tract so <laughs> so sometimes if I sneeze or like if I cough sometimes if I laugh like I'll tinkle a little bit it's embarrassing but it's just like it's part of being pregnant like you really like I don't know what happens but it's just like you don't have that strength that you used to and I actually like I'll do kegels because I'm like I'll be damned if I'm just gonna be sitting here peeing on myself so I'll do kegels to try to help it and it does help but it's just like I never really thought that like that was a serious thing like you do pee on yourself sometimes oh and the other thing is the running to the bathroom all the time like that that is still going on that happened in my first trimester and it carried on to my second trimester for me um, shortness of breath I had that since the first trimester and it carried on now so I'm like I don't understand because there was really no weight on me in the first trimester but I got winded very easily I still have mood swings which I think is just the hormone imbalance thing tender breasts still have it not as bad as the first trimester literally the first trimester I had to be careful with wrapping a towel around me because like if the towel even rubbed against me like lightly it was just like it felt like sandpaper or like little mini paper cuts like it was just like hypersensitivity in the worst way ever and oh another thing these these things I've had to change bras two times I'm normally a D like when I'm really fit I'm a D and but like when I got pregnant I was a bit I had more weight on me so I was like a D slash double D first trimester I went into full double D so I had to go get like double D bras because I only had the D's at home so I had to go get full double D's then like into the second trimester I had to go into E's the problem with E's is not everybody sells them so I really I had to go into like winners winners was the only place I saw that sold them the uh, cute like La Senza Victoria's Secret places they didn't had that big of a size so in winners like which is like Marshalls and stuff they had them but they were like the ugly grandma bras and they still had padding which I was just like at what point do people still want padding in their bra like, I just want something to cover me and give me lift like I don't want any padding so I had to get those babe made fun of them because he was just like those are the ugliest things ever but I'm like what am I supposed to do like I need something to hold them back and to give me support and the places I've gone to doesn't have um, this size and I'm, I'll be damned if I'm gonna spend $60 to get one custom made sorry the camera cut out so yeah so I've had to get bigger bras because these have gotten very heavy 
Uh, what else have I dealt with? I have had weight gain, as you could tell. Oh, hyperpigmentation is the devil. My neck is considerably darker than my face. Um, my Linnea Negra is, of course, dark. The nipple region has widened and it has gotten black basically it's just black like it's not dark brown it's not like before mine were like a medium brownish like a couple shades darker than my skin now it's just black and like there's nothing you can do about it and it's like taking up half of my boob so there's that um what else have i experienced not yeah that was pretty much it like i really haven't had those crazy cravings that women have had you know of course baby movements and stuff i started to feel that in the second trimester and it's really crazy like it it actually once i started to feel her move oh, oh yeah once i started to feel her move i actually started to feel more connected to her and i actually started to feel movement two days before my gender reveal ultrasound and like it was just like since then i've been like crazy in love with this baby like it's just it's that attachment you build once you start feeling like the baby and like you know that it's like a real being inside like it's really crazy oh another thing crazy dreams i've had crazy freaking dreams i remember before i found out the gender i always thought it was a girl just because of the way i was caring and people would tell me yeah you're having a girl plus i was like i did my little science experiment so it better be a girl or else like i'm gonna be pissed so um excuse me I, uh, yeah, so um, the dream, yeah. So the day before I, like a couple days before I found out what I was having, I had a dream that I was holding a little baby in my arms. And in the dream, it was a girl. And she had, um, it was really weird. She had gray eyes and red hair, which I was just like, what the hell is this? Like she was a chocolate baby, but she had gray eyes and red hair. And I was just like, uh whose baby is this like like it doesn't even run in my family like the closest thing we have to colored eyes is my mom and my sister who have like like brown eyes and red hair i had like reddish blondish brown hair as a baby but like it clearly darkened as i got older but it like it wasn't like ginger red so she had ginger red hair and i remember thinking like what the freak is going on but yeah, so we will see what she looks like. I actually have an appointment to do a 3D ultrasound on my 30th week. So I'm really excited about that just because, like, I just want to know what she looks like. I'm the kind of person I don't like surprises, so I kind of want to have an idea of who she's going to look at, look like. Especially after that 20-week ultrasound, and I saw the size of her head. And most people say, you know, the baby's head is considerably large in the beginning, but then they grow into it. But her father has a huge head. So here's hoping that she doesn't have a big head. But I just want to see what she's going to look like. I'm just interested to find out how our features would like complement each other or attack each other and who like kind of she she would more, look more like. So I'm excited about that. Other huge thing in the second trimester, memory loss. Memory loss is the devil. Especially like if you're still working cuz like I work in the corporate world. So it's not friendly to pregnant women and it's definitely not friendly to the symptoms of being pregnant like so many times like literally i'll be working on something something some something else distracts me and i completely forget and i don't go back to it at all like the other day i kind of had a mini meltdown because my boss was he asked me to order some food for us like uh for a part a staff party and i was like okay cool like i was gonna order the food but then my phone rang and someone called me about a shipment so after I did that, I totally forgot about the totally forgot about the food until the day of the party and like my boss literally came to me and he's just like, Oh, is like the pizza on the way? And I was just like, Pizza? Then I was like, Oh my god, like luckily like I was able to order and run and pick it up and like I was only like thirty minutes later than the initial time we set to get the food. But I was just like it's just stuff like that, like it just pisses me off. Like literally I've started writing on my hand because I find that between the time it takes for me to go find a pad of paper, I've already forgotten what I was supposed to do. So, memory loss ain't cute, like, at all. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it for the first and second trimester. Like, pretty standard stuff that most pregnant women go through. Um, I will do a few more pregnancy videos. I'll definitely do a video about the what the fucks about pregnancy. 
I think like it'll actually have some of the symptoms of pregnancy but other other things that you deal with as a pregnant woman and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any suggestions for anything else you'd like to see please let me know in the comments below and until next time bye